In this tutorial we will discuss extraction of copper from copper pyrites CUFES2. Let's start with introduction. The chief ore of copper is copper pyrites. Mostly, copper is extracted from copper pyrite using dry process. Cuprous and ferrous sulfides are obtained after roasting of copper pyrites. Iron sulfide thus obtained is oxidized to iron oxide and then removed as slag by the action of flux. Cuprous sulfide is oxidized partially to cuprous oxide which undergoes reaction by unreacted cuprous sulfide to give metallic copper. Steps involved in the metallurgy. Crushing and pulverization. The big lumps of ore are crushed using jaw crushers to get crushed ore which are pulverized using pulverizers or ball mills to get powdered ore. Concentration of ore by froth flotation process. Copper pyrites is concentrated by froth flotation process. The pulverized ore is kept in large tank containing water and pine oil. The mixture is agitated by passing compressed air as shown in figure and ore forms froth and comes to the surface while impurities are left in water. Roasting. The concentrated ore is heated in a reverberatory furnace in presence of air, at temperature insufficient to melt the ore. Following changes occurs during roasting process. Volatile impurities and moistures are removed. Impurities like tetrameric phosphorus, arsenic, sulfur, etc. are oxidized. Iron pyrite is decomposed into cuprous sulfide and ferrous sulfide. There is conversion of iron sulfide into iron oxide and partial oxidation of cuprous sulfide into cuprous oxide. Smelting. Roasted ore is mixed with sand and coke followed by feeding into a blast furnace. The modern blast furnace is made of steel lined inside with refractory bricks. The furnace is of about 15 feet in height and about 6 feet in diameter. Hot air of about 800 degrees Celsius temperature is introduced through two years. Coke burns with hot air and temperature inside the furnace reaches to about 1000 degrees Celsius. The following changes take place here. Most of unreacted iron sulfide gets oxidized to iron oxide. Cuprous oxide formed by the oxidation cuprous sulfide reacts with unreacted iron sulfide to get cuprous sulfide again. Hence complete removal of iron sulfide is most important step in the extraction of copper. Iron oxide is converted into slag by the action of sand. Slag being light and molten that can be removed from the upper layer. At the hearth of furnace, molten mass is obtained which is known as mat. This mass mainly contains cuprous sulfide and little ferrous sulfide. Bessemerization. Metallic copper is recovered from copper mat by bessemerization process which is carried out in a vessel called bessemer converter. Bessemer converter is a pear-shaped steel vessel lined with magnetite and quartz. This is special bessemer converter where two years are present in the sides mounted in such a way that the converter can be tilted in the desired direction. Copper mat thus obtained after smelting is transferred to Bessemer converter. Small amount of sand is also added. Blast of hot air is passed through two years. Air is blown through the molten mat. The following changes take place here. Ferrous sulfide left behind in the above mentioned steps is oxidized to ferrous oxide, which reacts with silica to give light fusible mass, called slag. Slag being light is drained out from the top of molten mass at regular intervals by tilting the vessel. Sulfur dioxide escapes out from the converter as waste gas. After entire iron is removed as slag, cuprous sulfide gets partially oxidized to cuprous oxide. The cuprous oxide thus formed reacts with remaining cuprous sulfide to give free copper metal. The reactions from conversion of copper pyrite into cuprous sulfide and ferrous sulfide and self-reduction to copper complete in the Bessemer converter. The metallic copper is collected from the base of Bessemer converter by tilting it. The metal thus obtained is allowed to cool, dissolved sulfur dioxide escapes out forming large blisters on the surface of metal. Therefore, this metal thus formed is called blister copper. Blister copper contains 98% pure copper. Purification or refining. Blister copper is purified mainly by two methods. One is poling and next is electro refining. Poling. In poling process, blister copper is heated in a reverberatory furnace lined with silica. 
through which molten mass is obtained. This molten mass is stirred with green wood poles. The hydrocarbons present in green wood poles reduce the cuprous oxide into metallic copper. This poling reduces cuprous oxide into metallic copper. Copper thus obtained after poling is about 99.5% pure. This copper is tough pitch copper. Electro refining. The copper thus obtained may still contain impurities like silver, gold, nickel, zinc, etc., which can be purified further by electrolytic refining. The impure copper is suspended as anode and thin sheet of pure copper as suspended as cathode in a large tank. Copper sulfate solution acidified with sulfuric acid is taken as electrolyte. When DC is supplied, copper is dissolved from anode and is deposited as pure copper at cathode. The impurities are left behind near anode as anode mud or anode slime. This is the flow chat of extraction of copper. You can see this also. Here all the details are shown in flow chart form. Physical properties of copper. Copper is reddish brown colored solid. It is good conductor of heat and electricity. It is highly malleable and ductile. Its melting point is 1083 degrees Celsius, boiling point is 2350 degrees Celsius and specific gravity is 8.85. Chemical properties of copper. Action with air. Dry air has no effect on copper. However, if copper is exposed to moist air, it forms thin green film of basic copper carbonate, CuCO3 CuOH hole 2 which is also known as malachite green. On heating copper with air that is oxygen O2, it forms cupric oxide which changes to cuprous oxide if temperature exceeds 1100 degrees Celsius. Action with acids. Copper lies below hydrogen in electrochemical series and cannot displace hydrogen gas from dilute mineral and non-oxidizing acids. Non-oxidizing warm and dilute acids dissolve copper only in presence of air. In absence of air, these acids do not react with copper. And copper with concentrated sulfuric acid, gives copper sulfate and sulfur dioxide. With nitric acid copper is oxidized to cupric nitrate. However, the nature of nitrogen oxide depends upon the strength of nitric acid. Copper reacts with concentrated nitric acid to yield nitrogen peroxide as one of the products. When copper reacts with dilute nitric acid, nitric oxide is produced. Copper reacts with hydrobromic acid and hydroiodic acid to form complexes. Action with nonmetals. Copper reacts with nonmetal, like chlorine, sulfur, oxygen, to form cupric chloride, copper sulfide, copper oxide as shown in the reaction. Cuprous oxide also react with air to form copper oxide as shown in reaction. Action with ammonia. Copper is dissolved in aqueous ammonia in presence of air, giving a complex compound as shown in reaction. Displacement reaction. Copper can displace the metals below it in electrochemical series. Reducing property of copper. Copper acts as reducing agent. In the above reaction mentioned, copper is oxidized and behaves as reducing agent. It also reduces ferric salt to ferrous salts. The itching of copper plates using ferric chloride solution is based on this principle. Uses of copper. Copper is used in manufacture of electrical wires, cables, etc. owing to its good conducting power. Copper is used in electroplating and electrotyping. Copper is used to prepare coins, ornaments and jewelry. Copper is used to prepare various types of alloys. Copper is used to prepare household utensils, calorimeters, etc.